Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Zero Celebrations and today I have a wonderful guest. I'm so excited to have him on here. Meet Donnie Lewis, owner of Your Event Matters Entertainment and Photo Booth. Hi Donnie. Hey Lisa, how are you? Good, how are you doing today? Very good, very good. Your beautiful office backdrop there. Yep. My yeah. cake over here. Ooh, la, la. And we'll get into that a little bit more today about your cake mapping skills. That's right. Very exciting. So first off, how did you get your start as a DJ? Yeah, so um, interesting enough, I was 17 years old and um, uh, I had a dirt bike. <laughs> and this is going to transition to a DJ story, I promise. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, I had a dirt bike at the time, and uh, I was having fun with it, but I kind of uh, grew to the end of its life, and I didn't, you know, really use it much anymore. Um, I had a buddy who had uh, some turntables, mixer, and a bunch of records, and uh, we worked out a deal where we had a trade, and uh, we traded the equipment, and, um, you know, started playing with the turntables, and then uh, eventually grew into uh, what I am today. So um, always had a huge passion for music. Um, still do obviously wouldn't be doing this if i don't um yeah and uh you know kind of blossomed into uh the year of it matters uh company what was your first gig your first paid gig so my my first paid gig all right so in 2002 i was 22 years old way and, back when <laughs> yeah right and uh um uh, back then i was i was i was heavy into cars i used to race cars back then and um, car shows were a big thing. Music was a big thing in my life too. So, um, instead of being conventional, like most DJs do and, you know, start, you know, doing small private parties or, um, jumping into nightlife stuff. Um, I decided to invest $19,000 of money that I saved up and put together my own car show, uh, and mini little concert, um, uh, locally and, uh, a DJ that events, uh, along with the digital salt team back then which 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 was a, a company that hobie created and um that's hobie that, armstrong hobie armstrong correct yep and uh you know they were the official djs um uh and then uh brought on kiss fm and they emceed it along with myself uh and then i organized the whole event and um yeah so my first paid event was my first car show that the Poughkeepsie journal ended up writing an article about uh, we ended up having over 5,000 spectators. Um, we had Mims there perform live, uh, maybe six other acts, plus bands on the other side of the school where we did it. And we had about 500 cars register. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I was in for. Um, that day, I did not have insurance, knew nothing about that. Uh, we had motorcycles doing wheelies in the parking lot with people around and thank God nobody got hurt. You know, we had uh, people that were um, that were my uh, security, quote unquote, uh, walking around. And um, I learned a lot from that event. You know, it, you know, it was, it was a great event and uh, and, you know, kind of put me on to the whole um, doing events thing. You know, so um, I didn't necessarily get into doing weddings until uh, much later. Uh, I think it was around 2011 when I started doing weddings. But yeah, so from 2002 to, to about 2011, um, small parties, some club stuff, um, some, you know, stuff inside the apartments and things like that, and and uh, just a bunch of various stuff. So tell me about the difference between your first few weddings and now. Yeah. How so, your event matters grown? So, so um, my first few weddings, I worked for a multi-op. <laughs> Um, uh, when I first started doing weddings, I didn't do them under your matters, right? So I worked for a multi-op and, uh, the experience I had from them, um, I grew from, uh, but I didn't necessarily enjoy, um, left that multi-op in, uh, 2012 and started your event matters. Um, the first event I did, um, awesome time, day wedding for a couple that I'm still friends with, um, learned a lot from that wedding, um, and then, uh, uh, you know, just continue growing from there. Um, I guess the, the biggest the biggest takeaway was uh, what I learned from the multi-op to uh, how I created our company. Um, you know, I was going to some events without even knowing what the bride and groom's names were. Uh, and just having no 
no personality to the event. And it felt like uh, it was always this cookie cutter experience um, where I was just playing the same music, feeling out the crowds. And there was just no, there was no emotion. There was no personality, right? Um, there was no personalization of the event itself. So when I created Your Event Matters, I mean, I dove in head first. And the, my focus was always on personalization, emotion, fun, and family. And it's still, to that, that, it's still that way this day. Um, our experience is uh, completely based on an experience that me and my wife, Jen, who uh, owns the company with me, uh, she'll be down here shortly to talk to, um, uh, had when we took our kids to Disney for the first time. And um, you hear the dogs barking in the background. I do. I do. It's a family business. It's all good. Same thing here. Right. You'll probably hear them bark soon, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so... Um, we had this amazing experience when we uh, took uh, our son to Disney for the first time and kind of um, uh, built our company around that experience that we had. Um, I mean, where else can you go where you walk around uh, 25,000 steps through thousands of people with a double stroller and uh, fighting to get on rides and kids screaming um, and then get back to the hotel and realize that that was absolutely amazing. All the headaches that you dealt with, um, you know, all the planning we did beforehand just kind of turned out to be an amazing experience. So that's how we created Your Every Matters and how we grew from there. I think the name of your brand really represents what you and Jen do very well. Yeah. So your yeah. event matters. And I think you make that clear to people, not just in the name, but how you represent yourselves, the services you offer to your clients, the whole shebang. And yeah. your family matters too. You make sure you take time out for those trips. I love seeing your YouTube videos now and then you guys going and having that too. And you know, some of the short getaways you get to take over the winter when it's a little less busy here in the Hudson Valley. Yeah, absolutely. So what, one of our big philosophies and um, uh, our big policies that we kind of instituted two years ago, <laughs> as my kids are growing, I got three small kids now, is um, we don't book every weekend. Uh, we don't, you know, so um, uh, we book a select number of weddings a year, uh, usually revolves around that number 30. Um, we're pretty selective with the couples that we bring in to our company. Um, we invest our time and our energy into each one of our couples. And it's really important that those couples invest their own time and energy into their event. Sounds really simple. Uh, sounds really silly to say something like that because you would expect, um, most couples to have an investment into their celebration and their ceremony. But we, I mean, we've had couples come in and say, eh, you know, we're easy. We want you to pick our first dance song. We don't really care. Um, you know, th those couples aren't necessarily for me. Um, I, I want to create a personalized experience for each of our couples. I want our couples to reach out to us. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that we ask our couples. We, we ask them um, that they accept the word no sometimes. Um, not to say that I'm not going to do something for them, but I want to make sure that their experience is exactly what they wanted, right? And they have to, if they're hiring us, just like they're hiring you for your services, um, they're hiring us based on what we do. Um, they're hiring us based on the experience that we offer. Um, so why handcuff that experience by telling us um, what to do, right? So- um, You don't want a list of 100 songs to play in two hours or no. four hours or anything. You want, a, you want to get to know their personalities Exactly. You know, so, I mean, you're hiring me. Ideas, but. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you know, those must plays are great. You know, you keep it to a couple of handfuls, especially if they're cultural or, you know, something that has to do with your heritage, your background, your family. Uh, those are great. But, um, you know, if you're going to try to, you know, give the DJ 20 to 40 songs and say, hey, play these during dancing. Um, there's a lot of things you're not paying attention to. Um, uh, you know, they're not paying attention to how those those songs have to be transitioned into each other. They're not paying attention to. Um, uh, the energy in between those songs or um, um, how those songs are mixed properly. So um, when you're hiring a DJ, it, you should really be paying attention to uh, questioning the, that DJ and making sure that they're the perfect fit for you and that they know what they're doing. Um, and, that, and that's important. That's really important. So who else, when you're interviewing couples, who else wouldn't necessarily be the best match for you guys? Is it somebody that really just wants the straight up silent, just play music in the background type? Are those couples you work with or that's? Yeah, no, I have, I have no problem with people that are, um, 
uh, extroverted or introverted in any way. Um, you know, I, I don't mind. Like, I, I obviously, I like more outspoken couples, right? Because um, the more they reach out to us, and this is the, the kind of that second thing we require from our couples is a direct line of communication. And I always say it sounds like a sales pitch. It's really not, though. It's me being sincere. Uh, the more they get to reach out to me, the more they get comfortable with me, the more I get comfortable with them, and the more I get to personalize their experience, right? So, you know, I like it when couples reach out and, you know, you know, Jen says, hey, I want to surprise Donnie with this unique experience. How can we do this? Absolutely. And we're going to work together and do that. And same for the groom. You know, I want the groom to reach out to me. You know, the grooms feel like um, sometimes they just kind of want to be in the background. But, you know, we want them to reach out to us. Um, but, yeah, I mean, really, the the, the only couples that um, um, I don't necessarily work with are those couples that are really rigid about the music. So um, if, if they're super strict about give it, supplying a list um, and saying this is all we want you to work on, uh, all we want you to work from, and all we want you to play at the reception, um, I'll tell them, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not your guy. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm very transparent, I'm very straightforward. And at our, uh, our initial meeting, I'll tell them, I'll tell them straight up, you know, you don't have to supply me with, with your music. Um, feel comfortable with me being able to provide the experience that you want. Um, but if you do have that list of music that you want me to uh, to play from and I can only play from that, I'm not the best guy for you. You know, there's other guys out there and you're just going to waste your money because we're a lot more um, our, our, our prices are a lot higher than most. Um, so if you're not allowing us to create that experience from you, uh, why pay that service fee for that when you're not going to you know benefit from that value? What about from the side beside? Um behind that DJ facade, if they want you to kind of pull back, not really MC, just do the music, not so much on the floor, no games, that kind of stuff. Will you take clients absolutely. that want you to be yeah. more silent? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when it comes to the MC work, it's completely tailored to the couple. I have no problem doing certain things. So uh, we recently had a wedding where they, all they wanted was the introductions and no interaction on the microphone after that. Um, Perfectly fine. I have no issue with that. But uh, for me, I love I love having interactions. Um, but I'm not going to just play a game without consulting with the client at our planning meeting. Um, uh, you know, some of them like our centerpiece games or uh, our anniversary dance, the way we do it, or the way we do our introductions and our grand send off. Some couples don't want the spotlight on them. They get really nervous and anxious about it, and I understand that. You know, I completely understand that. Uh, so that's part of our planning process. Um, you know, each couple we meet with about six weeks beforehand, and these are some of the things we talk about. Wonderful. Tell us a bit about some of the things that you do. I know you have monograms, you have event lighting, you do a lot of special things that not many people in this area or even in the U.S. are doing yet, including cake, the cake mapping. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we offer, when it comes to lighting, we offer pretty extensive services when it comes to lighting, um, uh, up lighting, monograms custom gobos, personalized gobos, uh, and monograms. Um, Tell people what gobos are. Yeah, so gobo is, is basically your name and light. So if you look behind me, you can see our logo on the wall and a sticker, right? So, I mean, you could imagine um, uh, if you go into a wedding and you see the couple's name on the dance floor, it may just be initials, um, and that, that'll be a monogram or what uh, some call a gobo. Um, what a, lo a lot of couples don't realize is... Uh, Gobos are, are a lot more than just a monogram, right? So uh, gobos can be texturing of walls, um, silhouettes of trees, things like that to go along with um, any themes you might have for an event. Um, when they talk about names and lights, uh, or typically when a couple's reaching out to me and they're saying they want a gobo, um, they've seen something online that another DJ calling it a gobo and it's, it's typically a monogram. Um, yeah, the monograms are huge. Like we, we do a lot when it comes to monograms. We have a whole other company uh, that we service uh, DJs all across the country. Well, of course, actually across the world with our monogram services uh, and our personalized monogram services, you know, and um, yeah, we use video projectors for our monograms. So that way okay. these, the monograms yeah. can be. So one of the things that I've seen on YouTube from your event matters and Facebook a bit over the past couple of years is the cake mapping that you do and the projection you know, venues. Um, I imagine not so much that could be a little bit tough, but for venues, let's say the Poughkeepsie Grand or another Anthony's Pier 9, let's say, 
where you can do these wonderful projections either on the wall, on the ceiling, you know, wherever, yeah. 360, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, the projections are slowly becoming a, a, a pretty popular service uh, it, it just outside of monograms, just doing what we call wall mapping or cake mapping, um, inspired by Disney. Um, Disney put it out there in about 2000, I think 2008 or something like that. Um, and they kind of went from there. In 2012, we really started kind of doing it. 2014, we started speaking nationally about it. Um, so yeah, cake mapping is, is basically, um, you're, we're, we're making content specifically uh, for your cake and and um, and the, the content is, you know, personality based uh, for each couple. And we map out the cake, all the layers of the cake, and we project a video onto the cake itself. Um, same with the walls, right? Uh, Diamond Mills, um, uh, the Grand View, the Grand. Uh, a lot of the venues around here have some like awesome services for us to create these really dynamic experiences um, and uh, create the, or, or uh, expand a theme, right? So uh, a lot of times we're getting booked into winter uh, for winter, uh, for winter wonderland themed events where we're making snow look like it, we're making the walls look like they're snowing. Or when you're standing on a dance floor, you can look around you and you see snow falling down inside the room on the walls and you're not getting wet and you're not cold and you have to deal with it, you know? So, um, yeah. And then you, yeah, using lighting, uh, in conjunction with the projections creates like a really immersive experience. Um, uh, very detailed and uh, really fun for each of our couples. So um, you'll see it more and more in the future. More and more people are offering it. Um, we're speaking more and more about it. We spoke at uh, the Lighting Symposium um, in Minnesota, Marquis Show in Chicago, DJ Expo in Atlantic City. Um, yeah, multiple places across the country. What's something if couples hire you to do cake mapping and they want to add one other thing, let's say, usually that cake mapping client I know isn't the person that's like oh I'm really on a budget <laughs> that's not the cake mapping client that's just yeah. looking to add one little thing this is a very detailed yeah item that is personalizing the experience but if they wanted to add one more thing would you suggest different colored up lighting or yeah. more of the projection on the walls so, so it depends. Uh, typically, if somebody's coming to us with that expendable income where they want to have something like cake mapping, because cake mapping um, can cost as much as some DJs charge for their services or some you know vendors charge for their services. Um, so typically, if somebody reaches out to us, they have that expendable income and they're looking to create some kind of uh, experience. Um, honestly, if they come in and they speak about cake mapping, I'll find out why they want it in the first place. Um, you know, they want to highlight some personality based thing that they have. Um, and I'll try to push them away from the cake uh, onto a wall mapping. Um, and the reason why I do that is because the cake is awesome. I'm not taking anything away from the cake itself, but as far as value goes and what most couples are looking for when it comes to um, the projection based services is they're looking for that wow, right? They're looking for that pop and they happen to see a video, one of my videos on YouTube or they came across a Disney video. Um, so, you know, let's say we're at the Diamond Mills doing a wedding and they say, hey, we want to have cake mapping. Um, I might push them onto a wall mapping and show them the difference between the two uh, and make and help them uh, find the value and the, the difference of the differences of the services. Um, if I move them to wall mapping, 100 uh, percent of the time, I'm going to try to sell them up lighting. Um, and I'm also going to try to sell them um, gobo work um, so that I could add more dynamic um, um, elements to the room to create this whole immersive experience. So, you know, if they're paying X, Y, Z dollars uh, for two walls to be mapped with snowflakes falling, then why not use up lighting around the room in like an ice blue and use our, our moving heads at what snowflake gobo is rotating to add more snowflakes around the room. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about, you know, what they're looking for. Um, if they're doing something like they just wanted the cake mapping with that, I might say, how about above the, the cake itself? We do a monogram and we sell them a monogram uh, where we have the projector shoot a monogram right above their cake. Uh, so it adds, it all ties in and, uh, you know, creates a cool little effect, uh, especially when they're taking pictures or they're doing their cake cutting and things like that. Nice. It's, it's, I mean, it's all about value. Yes. But you it know? all starts with the couple and their event and the basic is the DJ and MC services that you offer. Yeah. You start from there. It's not, most of your clients, you would say, start from there, correct? You don't go out and, ugh, let me try that. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Blooper reel. <laughs> Take two. Um, so most of your clients start with the DJ services, correct? They don't come to you necessarily for the cake mapping, although occasionally you might get a call yeah. from someone who already has their DJ services. They want you to come out and just do the cake mapping or projection, et cetera. Yeah. But for your own clients, you start with that DJ service, correct? And then you, they could add a photo booth, they could add the lighting, et cetera. Yeah, so the vast majority of our business is our DJ services. Um, uh, and then, you know, they all expand from that. Um, we do get some lighting jobs and projection jobs, uh, but the DJ jobs um, definitely out, outnumber the, uh, the, you know, the extra services that we offer uh, uh, independently. All right. Tell me a little bit about, actually, let's pause for a second. All right. So, Donnie, we were talking about in the beginning here how, well, here we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason I do not love Facebook Live. Yeah. Um, so when we started our conversation today, we talked about how your event matters is owned by you and your wonderful wife, Jenny. Yep. Where is she? She's right here. Bring her in. Look at it. Conveniently, she's hanging out. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. And Bella, who you heard before, is uh, had joined us. Oh my gosh! Bella. Yeah. Hi, Bella. <laughs> She's so she, she tends to come down and say hi to the couples when uh, when they're here too. She, she does she, not leave my side. No. That, so we're talking, so okay. you two have this wonderful family-owned business. How do you work together as a team? What do you do differently to support each other and your Family make time, et cetera. Tell me a little bit about the family ownership of the business and how you balance that. Yeah, so um, a lot of the interactions with the couple are done by me, um, meetings and things like that. Uh, Jen handles a lot of the. I do the paperwork. Yeah, she'll, I'll she'll get them filed in the system. <laughs> um, yeah, she'll she'll get them into our our uh, our client portals. Um, make sure that all that information is in there. She files all the documents for us. She does the banking and, and all the uh, the back end stuff. And then the day of the wedding, um, she acts as my assistant. Uh, she lines up the couples uh, for the bridal party introductions or the wedding party introductions, I should say. Um, and then, uh, you know, she helps me cueing music while I'm on the dance floor interacting with the crowd and uh, acts as a quote unquote DJ uh, playing the music um, for dinner. us. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, yeah. I've known you guys for years. I did not know that you did that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's fun. Yeah, so he keeps telling me he's going to teach me how to mix and stuff, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's time. It's just making sure our time with the three kids, the and businesses. A little bit older. And, yeah. 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 Sometimes between now and grandkids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. But she, like, you know, I go out, when I go out and do introductions, I love being on the dance floor and uh, interacting with the guests and getting them pumped up and getting them motivated uh, to start the celebration. Uh, so and then I stay back on the turntables and get the music all going. So that runs smoothly on that end. Yeah. So, you know, we've, uh, but when we first started, we kind of rehearsed this um, at home. And like I had my turntables in here and, you know, I would show Jen how to do everything. And uh, she goes off my cues. She hears certain things that I cue her with and she'll know when to start songs. And then I, uh, inside our system or inside Serato, which is uh, the program I used to DJ with, is I'll, I'll set the music in an order for her. And then she, and then I label everything in the music, uh, so she can read the labels and knows uh, what needs to go on when. And then she'll base everything off my cues. You two sound extremely organized, which is yeah, so paramount to pulling off the events that you do. Yeah. I that there are some folks out there just from doing weddings for so long, where I show up to do a ceremony, and they bring in somebody who is a DJ at a club, which is great. Some DJs at clubs also balance weddings, but this one didn't prepare very much and had no idea what they were walking down the aisle to. So when I got there, I made some suggestions. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, absolutely not. Experience. There's a reason that people hire the two of you to make sure that they have their event, and it's going to sound a little <laughs> cliche now, but their event matters. <laughs> well, seriously, I mean, um, um, you know, I, I busted my butt when it came to starting the company, to creating a, a, a name for our company that meant something. 
meant not only meant something about what we do, but meant something to the couples. Like conveyed what we do, right? So um, I, I'm I'm a terrible salesman. I really am. I you know I just kind of let my passion for what we do um, speak for us, and then I use my daughter, my my 18 month old daughter. I show them there, and they can't say no to her, right? Oh, <laughs> you're not a kid person. You have your Bella. Yeah, your right. <laughs> and um, but yeah, I mean um. You know, uh, everything we do is is super structured, super organized. And like I said, I want an investment for our couples. I tell a couple straight up, um, uh, we do require some homework from you guys. Like we require you to fill out this planner. I don't require you to have to know what songs you're going to use for your cake cutting or for your final dance. I'm there to help you with it. Um, our portal um, has ways for our couples to um, do their own homework or, or check out music or check out top charts for certain formal events. Um, but I always say the only the only song that I'll never help help or I, I shouldn't say never, but I usually uh, don't help them with is their first dance, right? And and I always say I don't want you know yeah. this person to forget twenty five years from now and then use me as an excuse of why they forgot what their first dance song is, right? And that's always you know a joke that I little insert during our meetings. But it's really I just I, I want to know um, I, I love the first dance, right? I love the first dance song. I love that the first dance song is so unique almost all the time. And, you know, it tells us all about their couples. And Tell me the things that you do during the first dance sometimes that couples have you do. Yeah. So so one of the things that I like doing is something we started doing about a year and a half ago, um, which we call the perfect first dance. Um, uh, basically, uh, I kind of built this off of our first dance song. Right. So Aww. our first dance. Our first dance song was Truly Madly Deeby by Savage Garden. I know from the pillow you posted on Facebook, very yeah. romantic. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so, uh, um, you know, we started dating when we were 17, and that song came out about then, and that quickly be, kind of became our song. Um, back in the day of, yeah, back in the day of Next Tells, when you could bleep and two-way people, uh, I'd be in my car, and the song would come on the radio, and I would just bleep Jen, and I'd put the, the, you know, the phone to the speaker and just let it play through a thing, or I'd voicemail her and, and call. Um, so basically a, first, a perfect first stance is, you know, we'll ask our couples to write a paragraph about why they chose the song they chose to be their first dance song, what it means to them, um, be witty, be romantic, but just really convey your personalities through this paragraph. And I want to read that off. I want to tell every, instead of just saying, you know, Donnie and Jen's first dance, uh, please welcome Donnie and Jen to the dance book for the first dance. They have chose to dance to Truly Mad Deeply. I'd much rather say, Donnie and Jen have chose Truly Mad Deeply because it means this to them and why it means that to them. And, uh, you know, it's it's all about those little elements, those little personalized elements um, throughout the event that really, more yeah, more you know, special. what what makes memories isn't that you're playing Uptown Funk because every DJ is going to play Uptown Funk, you know. Um, what makes memories is when you're evoking emotion uh, throughout the experience for the guests. That's what makes people remember things. And uh, when I have couples specifically writing in our reviews about our first dance or about the anniversary dance or about centerpiece giveaway or fun little elements throughout the night, then I know it's really touching people and they're really remembering those kind of things. Now, something else they can layer on top of that. You still do the dance on the cloud, I imagine? Yes, yep. So yeah, and then we do the sparklers, you know, sort of indoor sparkler fountains. Um, we'll do those for the first dance too, like whole dancing on the cloud. And then if they really have expendable income and they really want to create something really unique, projection mapping on the back wall with our with our cloud scene. So we'll have like on a back wall, it'll be stars and then rolling clouds, and then we shoot them with the cloud glass. So they're when they're taking the pictures, they're really looking like they're dancing on the cloud. So um, where can people see some of this information? Um, you have a YouTube channel or a yeah. video channel? Yep, you just uh, uh, YouTube search Your Event Matters. I have a couple of different channels on there, but there's one that is uh, my predominant channel. Um, you can find, I think there's a, I don't know, a, a few hundred subscribers on there now. Um, Instagram is big for us too, uh, which is just at DJ Donnie Lewis, um, or our website, youreventmatters.com. And on Facebook, you have a couple of locations. One of the personalized, uh, yeah. oh, and the camera. Oh, there goes the camera. Uh, uh, that's worse. Okay, I hit, hold on, let me get it out. Fuck. Okay. Um, so on Facebook, I know that you have more than just your page. You also have a group, which is part of your personalized experience, so that when couples, they work with you, you don't just say, 
congratulations and farewell. Yeah. You invite them into this special group. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I have a group. Um. Uh. Uh. I. I have definitely been lacking with the group recently. Um. Just because of the way Facebook is, the way Facebook is evolving, uh, kind of takes some things away from us when we're doing things. But I, I have what we call the uh, the Your Event Matters Entertainment Family Group, um, and that group is filled with um, a lot of my old, uh, a lot of my past couples, um, some new couples, and uh, it's just my way of allowing. So if, if we have a, a couple that comes to me and says, "Hey, can we, you know, maybe they haven't heard anything about us, uh, can we get some references for your couple references from your past couples?" Um, instead of saying, yeah, here's an email, you know, you can write out to them or here's a phone number for somebody you can reach out to. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm completely transparent. I say, hey, let me add you to this group, uh, make a post and you might see a hundred of our past couples in there and they're going to respond. They'll say, hey, you know, Donnie does this. Make sure you do that. Do this. And, you know, they'll add tips and tricks themselves. Um, you know, take some stuff off my plate and uh, sh it, it creates some more security for that couple that maybe. Um, hasn't really had an experience with us in the past other than just a couple of referrals or just Google so searching our company. Tell me a little company. bit about how you plan out the timeline that you're going to work from on a couple's wedding day. Yeah, so um, uh, six weeks before each wedding, we reach out to our couples to sit down to have our planning meeting. Our planning meeting is very extensive, um, uh, usually lasts about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and we discuss how and when they want to do everything they want to do from their intros to the first dance to their very last dance uh, ceremony for doing ceremony, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to inform them, um, give them ideas. Uh, but genuinely, at the end of uh, whatever formal event we're talking about, they're going to choose the way that they want to do that formal events. Um, uh, I've, I've become very aware of the needs of the venue and other uh, professionals that we're working with and always account for what's needed there, right? So um, knowing when dinner is gonna be served typically if they're doing family style or they're doing individually served or they're doing buffet, um, knowing that they have to take dinner orders and how they have to take dinner orders, knowing that at 7.15 in a year from now is gonna be, is gonna be the sunset, right? So knowing that the photographer might wanna take that person out for a picture around that time. Um, we're detailing all these different things throughout the night, right? And then finding out what things they want to do. So um, more and more couples are not doing things like the garden bouquet. Um, you know, well, we we very rarely do them. Although recently we were doing them kind of often, which is a bit surprising. Um, more and more couples are not doing the cake cutting. Um, more couples are saying, you know what? Uh, don't interrupt the music. Uh, we're just going to kind of do our cake cutting in the back of the of the of the venue while it's happening. You know, what my answer to that is always, don't do that. Never do that. Why? So Aunt May and Grandma are going to be pretty pissed off they didn't get to watch you cut your cake. Some they didn't even know it was happening. Yeah, you know, they're going to come up to you and say, what happened? They're going to come up to me. They're going to ask why I didn't announce it. Um, some people value different aspects of the night differently, right? So you have to account for that. So I asked a couple why they want to do the cake cutting that way. And it's almost always because they want everybody to just keep enjoying themselves. They don't see the need to stop the music to just do the cake cutting, right? So most of the times we build around that. So we'll do the cake cutting during dinner at the end of dinner and then open a dance floor. Or what we're doing new recently, uh, we've done for the last maybe six months or so, is um, for those couples, we'll do the cake cutting uh, right after their intros and before their first dance. So they, they introduced into the room, their cake is on the center of the dance floor, and then they cut it. And then they go into their first dance. Um, and then for those couples that say, you know what, we don't necessarily want to do the cake cutting. We, you know, we're not, you know, we don't want to feed each other and do everything. Well, tell them, come in during cocktail hour while your cake's set up, stand in front of the cake and pretend to cut it and get a, and get a picture. So at least you have a picture of it um, uh, that you can kind of live off of, right, in the future. Um, but yeah, so mo most of those couples that aren't doing those uh, those kind of formals, um, like the cake cutting and the garden bouquet, um, you know, they'll do things like the anniversary dance, or they'll have fun with the centerpiece giveaway, or the shoelywed game, right? The shoelywed game has become more and more popular. Uh, if you have a very outgoing couple um, and a really fun crowd, um, we could do the shoelywed game, right? And uh, basically, for those that don't know what the shoelywed game is, uh, you have the bride or you have the couple um, sitting sitting back to back, um, and you ask them certain questions. Uh, and I always use the example of um, uh, who said I love you first, right? 
and you hold shoes, right? So whether it be the bride's group, the bride's shoe and the groom's shoe or the groom's shoe and the groom's shoe, if it's, you know, same sex couple and the bride's and bride's shoes and, and they hold them up and whatever, sh whatever, if they match, then they got the answer right. Right. Um, but. And who has nicer shoes? What? <laughs> who has nicer shoes? Right, right, right. But so more and more people are doing this and um, uh, we don't necessarily like to do anything that everybody else does. We like having our own spin on everything. Um, so once more and more people started doing the Shitty Red game, we put our own little spin on it. And um, we uh, we turned it into uh, a drinking game. Ah. Yeah. So so we call it the Boozy Wed game. And um, basically we have the, the, uh, the couple sitting back to back. And instead of holding shoes in her hand, we have them holding whatever signature cocktail to be drinking that night. I'm not looking to get them drunk. I'm just looking to have them have a, a cool, unique experience with their guests in the room. Just doing a little di bit different. Yeah, just a little bit differently. And um, uh, as soon as I announce it that way, because we have a you know we have a fun way of announcing um, the boozy wet game itself, where the maid of honor and the best man walk out to drinks, and we surprise everybody with the way we're doing the game, and you hear it. And it was like ah, oh, and, and we say, what do what do you think they got to do when they're when they get the question wrong, and then you hear everybody say, they got a drink, they got a drink, you know. Okay. You know, we always have, we always have um, uh, you know, the groom or the bride facing one side and the groom or the bride facing uh, facing their side, you know, the family side, their friend side, wherever, wherever their most uh, people are. And uh, we want them to be involved. So we want, I tell them, I said, roast them, have fun with them, call them out on things when you hear them uh, or when they're wrong. And um, uh, I mean, really, though, at, at, you know, at the end of the night, if they're not doing the guard of okay, which most people aren't because they feel like it's an old school tradition, um, we, we always tell them the, the focus all the time shouldn't be on tradition unless you're always about tradition the focus should always be on your guys personality blending mm -hmm. them together perfectly and showing off to everybody in the room right and and that's like what we want to do so um, their event matters exactly exactly yeah Is any final thoughts on your end anything else you want to share with couples today no, I mean, just remember to uh, wh whoever you're reaching out to, whoever you're looking for, just make sure that um, your guys' personalities match. Um, value shouldn't be based on um, a monetary status, should be based on a personality status and something um, that uh, uh, you're going to get all that value out of, right? So just reach out to those people that are going to help you through the process, um, people that you're comfortable with talking to, and people that you're comfortable with um you know, coming out to and just and just you know opening up to and uh, creating that event. So that's it's there to help you. Yeah, you know, get your perfect day. Yeah. And how can people reach you if they want to connect with you directly? Yeah. So right on our website, youreventmatters.com. Uh, they could call, text um, my cell, which is on there eight four five two two four four seven nine five, or uh, you know just reach out to us through social media, our Facebook, our Instagram page is at DJ Donny Lewis. Wonderful. Thank you both so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll have you on you. again very soon. For sure. Some updates. I'm sure you're coming up with new wow moments all the time. I think you do a spectacular job with your couples. And again, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.